So the $6 million question I get asked is why should people travel to or live in Japan? In my case, I really love the safety and the comfort that most Japanese are honest and will respect each other's property. Japan usually ranks in the top 10 of safest countries in the world, but most of the other countries in the top 10 have populations of 10 million people or less. Japan's total landmass is equivalent to the state of California or Germany, but it has a population of over 127 million people. Japan has more people than all the other top 10 safest countries in the world combined. That many people in such a small country and at that scale, so densely populated, I believe that for that size, Japan is the safest country in the world. In today's video, I'll give you an example of Japan's safety and respect of other people's property that actually just happened to me recently on the train. A lot to share today, so let's get right into it. Hi, I'm Mike Mutsuno, the man in Japan. If this is your first time to watch my videos, I'm originally from Hawaii and I've lived in Japan for over 25 years. On this channel, we talk about life and everyday living in Japan. If you like the content of this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Although Japan has a very safe environment and petty theft and stealing of other people's belongings is still yet uncommon, many Japanese have recently warned me that things in Japan are changing for the worse and that I need to be more careful and vigilant. I may be a bit naive, but when I look around Japan, and yes, there is stealing and crime in Japan, sometimes people are murdered and robbed, but when compared to other countries, especially like the US for example, Japan is still a very trusting, honorable and safe society. So I just got off the train in Kita Shinchi in Osaka. I left my Columbia Red jacket which I really like on the train on the top level. I knew when I first got in that if I put it up there and I leave my backpack down, the chances are I might forget it. But I thought, no, I can do this. So anyway, I was looking at my uh, phone and also playing with this uh, Canon camera and then got so involved. So when my stop came, I just got off. And then I, after I got off the ticket gate, I realized I forgot it. So I went to see the station person and he said that I have to give me a number to call. And I'm supposed to call in about 20 minutes to see. At the end of the line is where the conductor usually does a check. And if they find it, they'll bring it in and then they will sign it in and then they will let this main center know. And if they don't find it, it may go back toward Kyoto Nabe. But hopefully somewhere along the line, no one takes it and no one steals it. And then they actually find it and then they register it and I can hopefully get it back. So we'll see, you know, they always talk about how people are very honest and no one takes anything. I, I'm a believer in that. So I hope that my jacket will turn up. But you know, a little bit worried, but what can you do, right? So I'm off to my lunch meeting and then in about 20 minutes, I'll give them a call and see if they have found it. And if not, I'll give them my phone number and then they will call me if they find it. So it's in the hands of the train gods. So it's a real hassle that I left the, the jacket on the train but you know at least Japan there is a good chance that it could still turn up where if this was in the United States or pretty much any other country it would be gone. Well, I'm back here at Kyoto Nabe. After the lunch, I went back to Kita Shinchi and I explained that I tried to call several times and I couldn't get through. So he called the end of the line. It was Sukaguchi in uh, Pass Amagasaki. And he said that they didn't find that red jacket. So I came back to Kyoto Nabe and I just asked the Kyoto Nabe person and he checked on the computer for me and it hasn't been turned in. So maybe this is one of those times that, you know, I always thought that Sasuga Japan, that, you know, it would turn up. Maybe this is one of those times that somebody actually took it. So we'll see. He told me to call call that number that I got from the Kita Shinchi person. So I will call again and um, I will find out if, if they have it or not. You know, hopefully it turns up. He said it is possible that nobody found it and it's going back and forth, back and forth on the train, which would be a miracle if it's still out there going back and forth and um, somebody finds it at the end of the day. So we'll see. But for now, it looks like the jacket is gone or maybe someone has taken it or it's still on the train going back and forth. Columbia is a pretty popular brand in Japan and you know, if somebody found it, maybe they decided to keep it. Wait. Which, you know, until recently hasn't really been a problem. Some people have told me that, you know, Japan has gotten a little bit more, you know, warukunata bad. But, you know, that bad compared to the United States is still like universes away from, you know, being bad. So that, that was my little lesson. Again, as I always knew, don't put your backpack and your jacket, your suit jacket or your coat separate because you put one up and you have your backpack with you. And the next thing you know, when it's time for you to get off at your station, you grab everything, you jump out and you leave it up on the top. And I've done that more than once. I've actually left twice a computer and a camera in the backpack. This is after coming back from a business trip and having the omiyage, you know, the, the gift for the office. No matter what, unconsciously, I always have like one hand full with something. And so that just suffice that I have that one thing, got off the train, got onto the next train and realized that I forgot my computer and my camera 
which everything is in that computer. You know, that was like my life. Twice I did it. I was just lucky that it was turned in or found. And so I went to get it twice. So I'm so thankful that at least those two times that it turned up. Now this is just a jacket. So at least it's sad, but it's not like your computer, you know, the cost of that and all the information that was in. If I lost that, it would have been, it would have been terrible. And I had a camera, an expensive camera in there too. So. Well, guess what? I just got the phone call from JR Lost and Found and they found the red jacket. I cannot believe it. Let's see, Sunday, two days ago, I lost the jacket on the train and then I checked at a couple of stations and I called them that evening. And then yesterday I was busy teaching so I didn't call them back. I just got a call from uh, Osaka station that is at the Lost and Found there and to come and pick it up. So unbelievable. Sasuga Japan. I really have never lost anything that I have forgotten on the train. <laughs> Well, I made it to Kyobashi, and from Kyobashi, I'm gonna take the Kanjo Sen, the loop line, to Osaka Station. So, I should have just come out the first floor, central exit. But I went upstairs and came out the south central, which got me turned around. So, I should be close. So I'm heading to the Lost and Found here in Osaka Station. Uh, he said go down, go right, go down one. And the office is right down there. So, so I think it's around here somewhere. So the lady explained to me but didn't even understand. It's actually pretty kind of confusing. It's not hard, just confusing at times. So she said to keep going and go left. So the Eki March, there it is, Lost and Falls, on our way. Columbia red jacket. Unbelievable. Sasuga Japan, man. Only in Japan. I just came, did the paperwork. It was very quick, maybe five minutes. Checked my ID, my driver's license, and then signed off for it, and I got it. So here it is. Sasuga Japan. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. Hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Arigato.